Ladies and gentlemen of the press, hi, I'm Leo D. And I'd like to tell you about my idea for tonight. It's an International D's Day to be celebrated today, the 10th of April. First of all, let me introduce myself. I am the husband of Lucy D and the father of five beautiful kids. That is until Friday morning at 10.52 a.m. The seven of us set off in two cars from our home in Efrat, near Jerusalem, on Friday morning to meet my parents, sister, and nephews who were driving up in a third car for a holiday in Tiberia. Lucy was with Maya and Karen in our white Nissan Micra, and I was with Talia and Yehuda in our brown Nissan Micra. We were ahead of the other cars. At 11.07, I received a call from my sister who had set off with my parents an hour behind us. She told us that there had been an attack on a car on the route up north, and she'd been diverted. Were we OK? Yes, I said, but let me immediately call Lucy. I called Lucy. No answer. I called Maya. No answer. I called Rena. No answer. Then I saw a missed call from Maya at 10.52. I hadn't noticed it ring. I hadn't picked up the phone. The feeling that she called me during the attack and I wasn't able to speak to her will come back and haunt me for a while. I checked Google Family Link and I saw that they were all located at the Hamra Junction. At the same moment, however, Tally had seen posted on Instagram a photograph that a passing car must have taken of the wreck, where she saw the back of a white car with a bullet hole and suitcases on the back seat with blood on. The suitcases were definitely ours. I immediately turned around. I drove like a lunatic to the Hamra Junction. We got there at 12.30. The police wouldn't let us see the car. And by this point, we knew that the two younger girls had been killed by a terrorist with an automatic Kalashnikov rifle, 20 bullets. And the older woman, the older woman had been airlifted to Hadassah Ein Kerem Hospital in Jerusalem. I wanted to be with Lucy in the hospital, but we couldn't believe that this was our car until we saw our family. So I wanted to see the girls, or at least the car, for myself. After what seemed like a lifetime, it was actually three lifetimes, I convinced them to bring us an ID card that they'd rescued from the scene. It was Myers. I went numb. I didn't cry yet. I was highly rational. I went back to the car, and I drove another hour and a half to, straight to the hospital. Lucy had had two bullets, one through her brain stem and one lodged at the top of her spine. There was an operation. There was reason for hope. But alas, our family of seven is now a family of four. Today is the first time that the three festivals of Pesach, Easter, and Ramadan have coincided for 30 years. Pesach and Easter are both festivals about redemption, making the world into a better place. Fasting on Ramadan, I have learned, generates empathy for those in need and thereby is also about making the world into a better place. Making the world into a better place is a good thing. All world religions believe that we have the power to differentiate between good and evil so that we can choose to do good. And if we choose to do good, then we make the world into a better place. I am saddened that recently, maybe over the past 20 years of my life, this innate ability to differentiate between good and evil has gradually been lost from humanity. That's why I wish to designate today the 10th of April as, April as D's Day. Today we differentiate between good and evil, right and wrong. And how do we differentiate between good and evil? We use our gut feeling. There's no better formula. We can't trust an app. We can't trust the news. Sorry, gentlemen. We can only trust our intuitions. So how would I like you to celebrate D's Day this year? If you feel that it was wrong to shoot dead at close range three beautiful innocent young ladies in the prime of their lives, then please post a picture of you or your spouse or your children with an Israeli flag. 
or just post a picture of an Israeli flag and share it on Facebook, Instagram, or whatever social media app you use. If you don't have an Israeli flag, make one. I'll show you how. There's a line at the top. There's a line at the bottom. There's a triangle, an upside down triangle, and that's an Israeli flag. If somebody wants to take a picture, they can post it on Instagram. That takes about 10 seconds. For too long, we have let a small minority try to convince us that there is no such thing as right and wrong. Everything is relative. And it's cathartic to do this because sometimes when we do wrong, we know we have to make up for it. But if we pretend that there is no right and wrong, maybe we'll get away scot-free. But that attitude to life is actually like a cocaine addiction. I'm told you can take one shot of cocaine and feel good. And likewise, when you convince yourself that there is no right and wrong, so the terrible thing I did was not so terrible after all, you feel good. But then you do something worse, and then you need two shots of cocaine to numb the pain which is caused because your soul knows it did something really bad. Before you know it, you're taking 20 shots a day and convincing yourself that any terrorist is justified to kill any innocent civilian because he has his, his cause. On the other side, my beautiful wife, late wife, Lucy, and I have tried to bring up our children with strong moral values, helping others, caring for others, building community. And Baruch Hashem, thank God, I believe that Tali, Karen, and Yehuda will do just that in their lives and pass those values down to their children and hence play their part in building a better world. This anonymous terrorist with the Kalashnikov, what did he achieve? A temporary victory? Some marks he can carve into his gun? Where's his future? Is he spending time with his children to teach them decent life, life values? Does he even have children? Or is he a child himself? A product of a broken culture that doesn't differentiate between good and evil. So he can't see a future for himself. He's taking 20 shots of cocaine, one for each bullet, in order to numb his soul, which is telling him, you are pure evil. The Bible, the best bullying selling book of all time, teaches us one major lesson. We can all make the choice between good and bad. And not only that, we can recognize good and bad through our gut feeling, although as Jews we believe that studying the Bible thoroughly makes us even better at getting that gut feeling right. Sometimes we see a news article or a social media post that demonizes someone good and idolizes someone bad. It gets many likes, so we like it too. Although in our heart of hearts, we sort of feel that it's not good for us or for mankind. That's a sort of shot of cocaine for us. We overcome the pain of doing something bad by clicking on like, which gives a short-term millisecond high. And so we contribute to the problem because now there are more likes and more people who share it on. So let's reverse this negative loop. I urge you to post an Israeli flag in a good way. You be the judge and share it with your friends and let them share it onwards. And let's see how many likes and how many shares we can get. Today is D's day when we can all differentiate between good and bad by sharing a picture with an Israeli flag. Let the Israeli flag today send out a message to humanity which is we will never accept terror as legitimate. We will never blame the murder on the victims. There is no such thing as moral equivalence between terrorist and victim. The terrorist is always bad. Imagine children at the beach. I had many years of that. One girl built a sand castle, beautiful, skillful, detailed. A little boy comes along and kicks it over. An adult who is neither parent to that child or that child tells the mother of the girl who built the sandcastle, your daughter is guilty of causing this violence because she built the sandcastle in the first place. Another adult agrees, and a third and a fourth. Isn't that how the world media treats Israel? We build, they murder us, they destroy, but it's your fault since you built it in the first place. So let's make today D's day, remembering Rena, Maya, and Lucy D. And also remembering the beginning of the turnaround in the Second World War, when the forces of good 
started to overcome the forces of evil. And the D also stands for differentiate, because in D-Day we have to differentiate between good and evil. And the Israeli flag is the sign of good. It's a sign of building something worthy. The most successful modern state, 75 years, and one of the global leaders in clean technology, saving lives all over the world through drip, drip irrigation, agricultural technology, medicines, computers, phone chips, voicemail, ways, electric car technology, Intel chips, lab-grown meat, and so much more. Yes, Israel and good is about building. Evil is about destruction. Israel is good, evil is bad. Today is a day to say yes to building a better future. And saying no to anyone who just wishes to destroy it with no better plan about how to build it better and stronger. World media, show me your true colors. Do you really believe in moral equivalence? Will you continue to support evil by giving it a voice? Am I and my family really a threat to world peace? We who teach kindness and love, we who value life over anything else. Is this anonymous killer really justified? Is he progressing moral values and a future for himself? Come on, wake up, listen to your souls. Do you really believe it? Or does it just sell advertising space for material goods that none of us actually need? Is it just build, blaming the builder for making something that someone else can destroy, just like those parents on the beach? Have we gone mad? Or can we still rescue this world from not seeing the difference? The Israeli flag is a sign of building a better future. And we know that. It represents the best of Jewish culture, which is about building a better world. These days, the day of saying, differentiate and don't destroy. The time has come to look at Israel in a new light. First, we Jews brought you the Bible. Now we bring you a country that has so much good it can share with humanity. Israel is a startup nation a builder of so much of what is good for all of humanity. My plea to the world is, support Israel's cause. Don't stand in our way. Support good over evil. If we support the good and reject the evil, then we can all play our part in building a better world. So make today D's day. Just share a post with an Israeli flag and let the message out. If we differentiate between good and evil, then we can all help make the best, this world a better place. Do it for your soul. Do it for the souls of Maya, Rina, and Lucy D. Do it for all of humanity. And do it now. It has never been more urgent. Thank you.